1998 government study said there were over 28 million children whose parents work outside of the home and too many of their children did not have access to affordable supervised and constructive after-school activities it is estimated that there are five to seven million latchkey children who come home each day to empty houses since 1987, the Jackie Robinson Center for Physical Culture, located in central Brooklyn, New York, has addressed this critical problem. Jackie Robinson really is one of the finest youth programs in the country, and it has to do with the quality of people that come and work with us and share their talents. And we're really trying to show the world how wonderful our young people are. It still brings tears to my eyes every time I come to a showcase and see how great our young people are. The Jackie Robinson Center for Physical Culture was established in 1987. We're actually a, a center of Mega Rivers College and we also have a, a separate 501c3. The mission of the center is really to work with young people. We want to look at what their strengths are and develop those strengths academically, physically, and socially. Our young people are age is 8 through 18, in some cases 19 if they've had a little difficulty finishing high school but they've been with us for uh, several years. The number of sites that we have range anywhere from 19 sites to 25 sites. We average about 5,000 to 6,000 students that we service annually and people when they hear that, they don't believe it and they don't understand it, but because we have block programming and because everything is, is structured, we're able to handle a flow of young people in and out of the building and through activities very easily. You can be a part of our program no matter where you live, no matter what school you go to. This makes it easier for parents because now all of the children can go to one place. What we're trying to create is uh, our young people being able to first of all work together cooperatively. And we do that through the uh, methodology of uh, cooperative learning. I'm not taking any words for question three. This is very exciting for all of the young people that we have in our program. Each and every child knows that they are required to participate in the educational piece. And also today, we have our math fair and each and every class is expected to do a project. And today, the division that wins the math fair, there's a trophy that is retained at that school for the year. Our focus is on math, basically because when the program first started, we did a survey. And the survey wanted to find out what subject do you have most of your difficulties with? Most of the youngsters said math. So we decided as an after-school program, we would put our emphasis on math to help the youngsters because grades are not as good as we would like to see them and hopefully with the additional support that they get in the after school program it will help to escalate their grades. When you make learning fun it doesn't seem as if they're learning but you know there's something that's called incidental learning. Incidental learning is just being involved in that environment you're going to pick up something. So the more we bombard them with this type of information, the chances are they're going to retain it. And so um, you can see the smiles on their faces here as they compete, and uh, that's what we're looking for. It's our responsibility to deal with developing the character of young people in our program along with the other components and what we try to do is to draw out you know the positive things in their life and in the discussion groups we try to deal with anger management, drug and alcohol prevention, 
uh, family issues, social issues, things that they may want to bring to the table that they normally wouldn't discuss with their parents or other adults. Get the police involved or to get certain adults in, involved with the problem. Part of our youth development is to also develop a sense of service to their community. And each one of our youngsters are responsible to develop a service project, as well as asthma awareness. And what we did is to try to heighten the knowledge of our community through having a full day of asthma awareness where we brought in practitioners and providers to run workshops and we train staff to become aware of asthma, the triggers, warning signs of asthma and the young people organize this along with the staff. We had a combination of uh, education, martial arts, and basketball today, and all of our kids stepped forward, put their best efforts on the floor, and they were very appreciated by the crowd. They got a nice round of applause. We offer a safe haven for them to do the same kind of things that they can do out there, but with supervision and some guidance involved. It's not just pick up teams where you play, they're very structured. They have coaches that care about them and good mentors for them. They have to engage in our educational component, they have to engage in our student development component. So we talk about things, conflict resolution, we talk about math and grades. So it's not just all sports, it all blends together. Each year we enroll over 2,000 youngsters for our sports program. That's martial arts, team handball, and basketball. We have kids who've grown up in the program from age 8, and here it is, they're 11 years later, and they're still here. Team handball looks like it's going to go off the charts and we have a big uh, thanks to give to Mr. Dung for even thinking about us. I work for the New York City Board of Education and we tried to bring non-traditional Olympic sports to New York City schools. We had this training session for Board of Ed physical education teachers in one of my schools in, in Manhattan and I invited John and Murph to come and check it out and they saw that the uh, possibility of team handball having some interest in the community here in Brooklyn. Now this is my first day visiting John's program and I'm really pleased to see that the, the kids are really enjoying it and competing at a very high level. It's only the second year we've been doing this. The kids seem very involved. Everybody's happy. Everybody's having a good, it's a good sport for the urban kids. Everybody that's enjoying itself. A lot of running, a lot of jumping, a lot of playing, but the kids stay happy. And we're just happy to be doing this and, and giving the kids something to do, you know, staying them out the streets. And congratulations to my team. Just in the martial art component, everyone's math scores has been raised. Uh, it's the group efforts to make it work. This program means so much to me because I have had first-hand experience in growing up in this very same neighborhood that I'm teaching these children in. I grew up in Bedford Stuyvesant and I knew that it was a time when there weren't that many programs around. So I see the need for this program to be inside our community. Um, I can't say enough about the administration here and their efforts to try to keep it alive, but it sometimes makes me nervous to see that sometimes we may not be able to keep this type of thing going. So I'm always pushing hard to make sure that, that not only the martial art component, but all of the components are being fed into and that the children get a chance to realize their potential. We understood from day one that our approach to youth development had to be comprehensive. That you cannot have a singular approach to helping young people. Because you can have a child that's very bright, but doesn't understand how to negotiate the world, how to relate to peers, how to relate to their family. So we knew that we had to develop them mentally, physically, and socially. It's also important 
that we have 5,000 and 6,000 children too because we want to develop a critical mass of young people within the community that's all saying the same thing. It then becomes easier for everybody to move in a positive direction. The work of the center's cultural component represents a vital link between historical legacy and the dreams and aspirations of students today, whose backgrounds are as diverse as the city itself. The Jackie Robinson Center for Physical Culture holds several uh, showcases throughout the school year. We honor individuals in the community who have made a significant contribution to the youth in our community. We invite parents and children who go to the schools. We bring out all of the performing groups that we have in Jackie Robinson. We have several. Those are dancers, martial artists, our choirs, the Steppers Marching Band, and the children come out and perform. They do a great show. And when parents come, they, 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 I know that they think they're going to see the children get on the stage and just do a little two-step dance or whatever, but actually, we transform the school building into this theater. And when they walk in, they're always overwhelmed. We create these great stage props and everything for the children so that they can feel really, really proud about what they've learned and what they do. And so when they come, it is overwhelming. And it is also overwhelming for us because once you see the children on stage, you are just flabbergasted as the amount of talent that they have and how they can portray that to the public. And the parents, once they see what we can get their children to do, they always bring them back. The Steppers Marching Band is a, a great example of that. You know, that these children now have been on TV, they travel all over the country, and they started, they, many of them started very, very young and go on to college through their interaction with the Steppers Marching Band. It's the same for the other sites. Many of our sites we've been in over 10 years. So we impact the lives of those children and they just get better and better and better. A key benefit of the center is the relationship that is forged between these extremely talented students and their mentors. The lessons learned have value that continues long after students graduate. Um, I was a member of the band at age 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, became director somewhere around 17 years old. What I've gotten from it being there is that I understand where the students are coming from. I have marched in the hot parades and wore the uniform. My philosophy is no one teaches steppers better than the stepper. And um, I learned a lot. Working with the kids keeps me balanced, keeps me focused. The same way I try to motivate them, watching them go through their troubles and their triumphs and their successes reminds me to continue to keep trying to better myself, especially when there are those that are watching, those that are following. I want to make sure uh, that um, I try to, to, to walk a decent path for them to follow. The Jackie Robinson Center for Physical Culture, with their highly qualified, skilled, and dedicated staff, are making a difference in the lives of thousands of young people every day. Amen. They have come a long way, but still have a long way to go. With the continued support of families, friends, and financial institutions, the growth of this vital community institution will be assured. I